I was assigned to the Military Assistance Command Vietnam, Advisory Team 59. The very first afternoon, we sat there drinking some bommy ball beer and uh, getting ready to go meet the Vietnamese battalion commander. And Houston told me, he said, first of all, you're a first lieutenant. Second, you've been in country only a couple of months. Third, this major that's commanding this battalion has been fighting first the Viet Minh before the French left, and since then the Viet Cong for more years than you've been in the Army. And he said, you should not presume to think you can tell him how best to conduct combat operations. We had an operations order, an immediate operations order, that required the battalion-sized force, which in our case was going to be about 300 men, to move in darkness uh, to a certain line of departure and be at that point at 6.30 in the morning to meet with another force that was going to be driving, they expected them to be driving a Viet Cong force toward us from the north. And we heard and saw helicopters to the north of us firing tracers down at the ground and the, just the sound of a battle and occasional green tracers going up toward the helicopters from the Chicom tracers. And our soldiers had climbed the bank and formed the line and had engaged the Viet Cong that were trying to, apparently they intended to cross the canal going south at the same location we had crossed it going north and we totally surprised them, had a good engagement and um, the, the command and control ship was circling our position. I was operating the radio and he said, be advised there's Viet Cong in the canal behind you. And I told Major Quinn, the Vietnamese battalion commander, VC, VC. And he grabbed six men and said VC, and they went into the canal and started probing around in the water to see what they could find. And they came up with one young soldier. And the kid was, first of all, very cold after being dragged out of that water. And secondly, scared to death and just trembling. He, his eyes were wide and he couldn't, it didn't appear that he could even speak. And uh, after he didn't answer the first few questions, the battalion commander, who always carried a swagger stick, raised that whack and struck him on top of the ear on one side of his head. And of course the kids howled and he started questioning him again. Still no answers. And so after a few more questions, he hit him on the other side of the air and he was just about tearing his ear off of his head. <laughs> and I <clears throat> finally, I said, Chuta, it does no good to beat this man. And the battalion commander turned at me and with a glare I'll never forget, he says, Trung Hui, that's the first lieutenant, I think you're right. It does no good to beat this man. And whap, he pulled out his pistol and shot him in the lower left side. And the wounded Viet Cong was laying on the ground. And one of his bodyguards was straddled of him and had his bayonet working just under the skin, just sticking it under and working it a little bit. And the kid was answering questions. He was, he'd answer anything real quick. I had this niggling question about what am I going to do because what I had seen as it, it just soaked into me war crime he shouldn't have been he shouldn't have shot that soldier